It's time we tell it like it is. Here are the five ugly truths about fifth wheels. I like how you said monkeying around. And I love how you keep saying fatiguing, but I'm the one that does all the driving <laughs> and all the work. She does none of the work, guys. She watches me do all this. And this is where I get really aggravated with this topic and why I didn't want to do this video. I just don't think you have the right to basically trash something that you've never really drove and got used to. I think that if you had the time to get used to it, I think you raise a really valid point that a fifth wheel is not for everybody. Welcome back to the RVR Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. And long story short, we sold most of our possessions to RV in a fifth wheel in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short. It really is. And before y'all come at us in the comments... Don't come know, at me. This is her idea. Again, another video that is Mercedes' idea. I wanted nothing to do with this one. But it, this needs to be talked about, okay? <laughs> because we've been living in a fifth wheel now for over two, two years. years. And we and have loved seen, every minute of it. Well, yes and no. There's some ugly truths about fifth wheel living that we need to bring up that I think people should know about. Yeah. Obviously, John was not like a willing participant to this video, yeah. although I did promise him really good back scratches. So <laughs> I had to work really hard to get him to agree to this. I want to offer you guys the most fair perspective possible. Yeah, and I think what Mercedes is trying to say is, is that a fifth wheel isn't right for everybody. And exactly. So, I love my fifth wheel. Um, Mercedes is intimidated by it. She can't imagine if anything ever happened to me that she oh, would yeah. keep it. She would immediately grab her class C or something smaller. Or I'd have to get a CDL, right? Yeah, but you feel it's kind of important being that it's that time of the year where we got all these new RVs coming into yes. the marketplace. Yes. Mercedes thought it was would be important to share our experience as far as I guess both of us are concerned of what it's been like to have such a big rig on the road. Exactly. And actually that brings us to the first one. Like a lot of people should not be driving a fifth wheel and i'm sorry if i hurt your sensitivities but the reality is that these are really tricky to drive now this piece i'm going to have to agree with her with because from my experience over the past two years and all the emails and comments that we've responded to we do have a lot of people that got in over their head when they purchased a 38 40 42 foot fifth wheel plus truck they're yeah. like 60 feet long we actually were parked right now next to somebody who bought an, a fifth wheel two years ago it's only 38 feet but he's now on his second insurance claim and he's getting yeah. rid of it yeah it's it's a lot and you know it's you could even drive like one fifth wheel and maybe it drives a certain way and you could get the same brand like what we did with sandpiper and the second rv drove totally differently because the fifth wheels kick out the the back kicks out a little bit and and you really need to know what you're doing and and some people shouldn't even be driving the big truck in the city right because the truck becomes your drive vehicle and that's too big for some people well you drive a truck like a sports car so you don't mind right. it i love driving the dually especially when it's not attached but i have always been somewhat comfortable with driving the fifth wheel because of the with that said driving trucks my whole life yeah. when i went to pick up our first fifth wheel i was intimidated <laughs> when i saw it connected to my new truck it looked it was, like a semi it was almost 70 feet long yeah. so it is long and it is intimidating yeah but more importantly it's not just driving it People are intimidated because a lot of these older parks don't have the room that you need to put that type of a rig in there. Yeah, so parking it? Parking is kind of tricky. And Mercedes really and I, tricky. we've gotten a lot of battles over the years <laughs> um, about parking. And what we ended up doing was, I don't ask Mercedes to help me anymore at all. What I did was I got a, a camera system. I always had a camera system on the back. I don't Save know. Save your marriage, people. I don't know how you can drive one of these things without at least one rear camera. Yeah. And on this rig, because it was pre-wired by Forest River, I went ahead and bought the Furion 3 system so I can see both sides and the rear that's pretty cool. that was a game changer for me and the truth is, is i can put this thing on a dime but mercedes still gets nervous every time we pull into a campground he can put this thing on a dime if he wants to but i can't right. and not everyone can and i think sometimes we lie to ourselves about what we can and can't do and men especially y'all aren't we ain't supposed to see you struggle so y'all aren't allowed to admit that you don't know how to drive a thing this this huge right right and that goes to the other piece that I'm just going to say it. Y'all can come at me at the comments. I don't care. But dualies are really hard to come by. And I know that maybe technically you can pull a huge fifth wheel without a dually, you know, but people are driving around with just the single wheels in the back. And I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I see that back truck bed is like really, really low. And there's this ginormous fifth wheel over top of it. If you can't 
like really, really properly have what you need to tow it, have someone else tow it for you. And this is where I completely disagree with Mercedes. I love my, my truck. My point is that if you can't get a dually and you're gonna tow a ginormous fifth wheel, don't. You still can with single wheels. Yeah. Uh, you can do it. There's, there's, there's 3500s where you can literally pull the same amount of weight. I think it's a preference. And I've seen people have wars you That's know, in true. social places about what's better, the dually or the single single wheels. Yeah. I like the dually when I'm carrying weight, just to have that back if one of those tires goes out. But if a guy is comfortable with two wheels in the back instead of the four like I like, I'm fine with it to each his own. Nothing drives me more crazy than driving down the road at 55, 65 miles an hour and see somebody go by me in a fifth wheel doing 75, 80 miles an hour and the back of their truck is mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. Right? They, they, they got an F-150 pulling a huge 38, 40 foot, you know, fifth wheel. That is just crazy. So make sure you size your truck to your rig and it's safe. And, and that actually comes to the next piece about it which is the cost, right? So the dualies right now are selling for a huge premium. The fifth wheels alone, I think in the in the realm of RVs are not all that cost prohibitive, but when you add the truck into it, it all of a sudden is like priced like a class A. And this is where I get really aggravated with this topic and why I didn't want to do this video. Mercedes has driven my truck or our truck four or five times, right? Every time she was nervous. She's driven the rig once for about eight miles. We shot a video on it. It was ugly. We were both terrified. It yeah. wasn't a very nice day. It wasn't a good day for us. But I just don't think you have the right to basically trash something that you've never really drove and got used to. I think that if you had the time to get used to it, I think you raise a really valid point that a fifth wheel is not for everybody. Yeah, it's not. And and that maybe a fifth wheel means you're going to have to get a bigger truck, so the cost could be more than a Class A diesel pusher. That's what I'm saying. I agree with all that. That's what I'm saying. But I think it's a to each his own. All right, so the other place where it can get expensive is surprisingly not so much in the mileage, right? Because the mileage towing the Class C was worse for us than the mileage. Yeah, and the 31-foot Class C Winnebago we were getting around six or seven miles to gallon, right? And that's, uh, I think, an, uh, a Ford F450 engine. With my rig pulling this, which is about twice the weight total, maybe even three times the weight, I get around 11 miles to the gallon. So I don't see that argument. Yeah, but maybe it's more expensive in finding a place big enough to camp, right? Right, now well, that's, this is the truth. So maybe you either have to pay a little bit more for a bigger spot or you have to pay for like a, a private campground as opposed to something that's run publicly. Yeah, you get a big rig, you're gonna have a lot harder time finding places. Number one, you're not gonna be able to camp in state in, 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 in national parks. Usually yeah. the rule is always under 27, 28 yeah. feet. They vary, but these older campgrounds, they only have a handful, maybe a dozen of sites that will accommodate a rig that's bigger than 35 feet. Some, you know, 42, 43 foot rigs, they might have two or three spots. It's gonna be a lot harder to find campsites if you have a big rig. Now That's with fair. that said, since we started RVing, I think the biggest mistake people have relayed to me in the emails and the comments is that they purchased a fifth wheel and it's too big and they're intimidated. Now of course there's gonna be a learning curve. It's gonna take a little while to get used to it. It took me a little while to get used to it. Is it a little bit more stressful driving this than it was driving a Class C that was 31 foot? Yeah. Yeah, the, driving the Class C was a piece of cake. I literally, I would park it in two seconds. It was that easy. Yeah. It takes a little bit more thought, a little bit more consideration when you're parking a bigger rig, but it can be done if you're patient and you go slow. Well, and that's why I'd rather you disagree with me and we bring up really good information. I'd rather somebody say you have a booger on your nose and say like, you're looking great. I want to hear the truth. Yeah. And the truth is some people like shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> well, that's, that's I think the value in this video yeah. is, is that at least you're having a discussion about it. And a lot of people are out there 65, 70 years old that are looking to purchase a fifth wheel that hasn't even really, you know, driven a truck. Yes, they're roomy. Yes, they're beautiful. Yes, they're great to retire in. But they're a lot more work than any other vehicle on the road. And that's the next piece is the fatiguing. We get so many emails of people asking us like, hey, I just got my hip replaced. Do you think a fifth wheel is a good RV for me? And there's a certain fatiguing physicality. Like fifth wheels are a lot of work compared to other RVs, especially having been in a class C for three months that's and now true. coming that back. That is true, yeah. And so they're more work in a couple of different aspects. Right. No. You're going to have to monkey around, jumping yep. up in the back of the truck, working the fifth wheel hitch, 
locking it up, getting the safety wires on, being able to get on your knees, you know. I would say to anybody considering a fifth wheel in your above 65 or 70. And you just had surgery or you something. You just had surgery or you have problems with your back. You know, you have to get a self-leveling system. You cannot try to level these things by yourself because it's just going to take you too much time. Yeah, and then the other piece that's really fatiguing because... I like how you said monkeying around. And I love how you keep saying fatiguing, but I'm the one that does all the driving <laughs> and all the work. She does none of the work, guys. She watches me do all this, but That's I think watching true. me stresses her out. It, yeah, I'm very fatigued <laughs> watching him. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, no, okay. That's fair. That's totally fair. But when you move a lot in a fifth wheel versus when you move a lot like in a class C or in a motor home, very different experience. And we've met people that move in their fifth wheel every four days. And it's like, how do you do that? How do you not go nuts? You know? Mm. So I would say fifth wheel is more for like slower travel. Yeah. I would say every two to three weeks, four just, weeks just in one location. Spot. And we've known some people retired that own fifth wheels that have a professional move it from campground to campground every one, two or three months, which is great. That's a great idea. If you're, if you're, if you're not comfortable driving the fifth wheel, but it feels like home, it's a great option. Yep. But just know what you're getting yourself into mm -hmm. and be really honest with yourself. Yeah. You know, if you haven't even driven a truck in your life, I would highly suggest you get training. Yeah. There is training that you can get by CDL drivers. Yep. I know some CDL drivers who have told me driving the fifth wheel is more stressful than driving the big truck. Ooh. And that's the truth. So, you know, just, just do your homework. Know yourself. Be honest with yourself. And yeah. just think these things through. Yeah. And with that said... I would much rather have a fifth wheel than a travel trailer because I think a travel trailer is all that more dangerous to move because around. Because they can, they can flippity flop, yeah. Right, they can wobble like crazy. So I think the fifth wheel, you have much more control of. It's a much safer transition from place to place. And it's, it's just, it's a lot more room. It's a lot more like home. Now, to be fair, I think one of the benefits of fifth wheels is that you maximize so much of the space inside the RV that when we went from a typical sticks and bricks stationary house to an RV, it was a really good transition because I still felt like I had a home. I still felt like it was big. I didn't feel like I was really in a vehicle. I felt more like I was in a, in a house, just a, a tiny house, right? And I also really love like the quality, the way they look nowadays. They look like houses. Though. They really We've are. We've been houses. accused of filming inside a house. We've been <laughs> told this looks too good to be an RV. You yeah. must be in a yeah. house. Yeah, we're in the Forest River Sandpiper, and our kitchen looks bigger than most condo kitchens and some single family home kitchens. Mm -hmm. Our rig is beautiful. When it comes to any type of an RV, the most living space you're going to get is in a fifth wheel. Yep. And when I closed Mercedes on the idea of going from selling everything and moving into an RV, Mercedes was the one that picked the fifth wheel. I did. Because when we went on the fifth wheel, it was the additional room. Now, Mercedes wants a class C or a class A. And I still love my, my fifth wheel. Now, a couple of things. I'm willing and ready to go smaller. I've enjoyed the increased simplicity. And I also want to be able to participate more in the driving. And I, I mean, I do love the fifth wheel for more stationary purposes, right? I think that a fifth wheel is excellent to have on a property if you're like building a house or doing like the, the fifth wheel has a phenomenal um, function but I think people are, are using it for what it maybe wasn't intended to. Is and I, I did completely disagree to each his or her own. And that's if you fair. like pulling a fifth wheel around. Every day. No, I didn't say every, every day. day. I, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but I think anyone, when we set out, we would drive our fifth wheel for a week or two. And then yeah. we'd move three, four hundred miles to the next location. We did that our whole first year. I love the fifth wheel. Mercedes said something to me yesterday. She was trying to talk me into doing this video. And she said, if anything ever happened to you, I'd take a CDL course. Yeah. And I said, bull crap. You wouldn't take a CDL course. You would sell this and get a class C. I would have that's to. that's really what's going on here. Now, after living in a fifth wheel that's 400 square feet, now mm -hmm. Mercedes I'm ready for went down to 240, <laughs> so 220, 230 square feet in the class C. And she loved the ability to travel around, be a lot more nimble. Fair. I'll be completely fair here. Driving the class C was a piece of cake. Parking it was a piece of cake. Compared to driving the fifth wheel. You Setup know, was Driving a piece the of fifth cake. wheel, you got to be intentional about everything. I got to get out of the truck. 
track. I gotta go super slow. I actually sometimes will put lights out or markers so I know where my track is going to be. There's a lot of intention and a lot of planning and just, you know, being patient to put the to put the rig where it needs to go. Even getting gas was like so much easier. But with that said, for me, living for three months in a 31 foot class C with me and Mercedes, the baby and, 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 and Skippy, it was a challenge for me. He after, hated it. After about two months, it started getting a little too tight. You know, yeah. we couldn't storage much stuff. We had to be more intentional what we brought. I hated the small refrigerator. I hated it. We had to go shopping for food every two or three days, right? Because mm -hmm. the refrigerator was so small and it used to ice up when we put too much stuff into it. To be fair though, it's not that I hate the fifth wheel. It's that without you, I couldn't do the fifth wheel. Well, then just say that. That's no, but that's but that's what it is. And right. I think that these are things that people need to know about up front. We get so many questions about what's it like in a fifth wheel. Right. So this is a good opportunity to share yeah, that. And I agree with that. It's one of the questions we get more often than not. How hard is it to actually drive the fifth wheel? How hard is it to detach it, to attach it? to park it. Mm -hmm. And we're honest with them, you know. Um, you should be in fairly good physical health mm -hmm. and you should be somewhat used to driving something larger. The other thing that I think you should know is the downside of a fifth wheel or travel trailers or towables in general is that when you stop, like to go to the bathroom, you have to exit in oh, order to do so. That's a good point. And in doing so, if you're at kind of a dirty truck stop, which we've done that before, you have to step outside, which is kind of gross. I love our fifth wheel and I hope we, we keep it. Um, you know, it's a discussion right now because Mercedes wants something drivable. Um, in case something did happen to me. And so it's something that we're looking at. In 2021, this year, we think the system's gonna break. We think there's such an influx of new RVers coming in. They're, they're guessing maybe a million new RVs sold. And guess what? This year, they're talking about maybe 150,000 new campsites. Mm -hmm. So you gotta think about these things, especially nowadays where all these guys are going out and buying these gorgeous, long RVs. There's no place to put them. And in our next video, we're gonna talk about 2021 and the crisis we have about all these new RVers coming in and being a lack of space. So we've done a lot of research to help you find the tools and everything you need to make sure you find camp, campgrounds and camping sites wherever you travel. We'll see you in the next video.